So uh, our next uh, speaker is Eldad Saad. Uh, he's going to present about firewall security assessment and benchmarking, IP6 firewall load tests. Uh, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, so uh, my name is Eldad Zak. I work in ANTC uh, since 2012. Um, 12, yes. Um, and I'm going to present um, one product of the um, project we work there, like Oliver uh, mentioned. So EANTC, like Robert said, we're an um, independent lab and we conduct from time to time our also test, independent tests uh, um, for uh, the uh, uh, event, uh, for example, the interop event. We do um, contract-based work, and we also do uh, research <coughs> projects like the one that uh, Oliver mentioned. Um, so just to put this into perspective, we had uh, various packages, and this is uh, the, the presentation will actually with this um, part, the test suite, and the execution of the performance tests. So just to show you the, the test suite, um, it's divided to, it has three chapters. Uh, and in each chapter, you have multiple test cases. The test cases look like this. They have the exposition with uh, why do you need this test case and references, uh, specific references, uh, motivation for it, the attributes or modifiers, how to execute the test, what kind of options you can um, select to, to do different permutations of the test, the execution, and what to expect, and last, the references we used. This set test suite is um, in total uh, 28 test cases, 11 of these are performance test cases, 11 uh, are firewall uh, protocol tests, um, and uh, six IDS tests, which uh, can be also executed with the THC test. It's published under a Creative Commons license, so you can feel free to uh, also expand on it. Um, yeah, and this is the URL for anyone who's interested. It also contains links to, for example, the FT6 uh, tool. Right. So without further ado, since we're short on time, um, we started the test by having a very, uh, I would say, uh, not simple, but very, um, yeah, not, not complex uh, uh, test setup. We used RFC 2544 as the guideline for IPv4 uh, to use 25 uh, drop rules, and in the end we have the accept rule. The RFC of 5180, which deals with uh, benchmarking for IPv6, uh, we took the equivalent and, of course, configured 25 IPv6 drop rules. We use the router between the firewall and our test equipment. This is just to uh, buffer the firewall for uh, and um, neighbor discovery effects, so we wouldn't have the firewall wouldn't have uh, the stacks of also performing neighbor discovery, multiple neighbor discovery, so the router offloaded this part. Um, and of course, in the beginning, we did the test with the tester and dropped the firewall, so we know that the performance can go through and uh, all the, this works uh, as we can ensure the performance of our test bed. So uh, the um, devices on test, we had two devices. The first is a checkpoint firewall. Uh, it's an appliance, so we had reference, so uh, like uh, I know uh, they did a test with checkpoint. Uh, we actually have, um, for this platform, we have the performance numbers, so uh, we benefit from that. So this firewall can do three gigabits um, per second um, with this constraint, so it has to be 15, 18 uh, bytes long UDP packets. And we'll come back to that. Uh, the software version, I can see here, that is not the latest version, what you guys tested. Um, we didn't have that version published when we conducted the test. It came out later. Um, yeah, and the next 
device we tested was the Juniper uh, J router. Um, and this one, I would take this number, the iMix number, although the iMix is not specified, um, with 400 megabits per second firewall uh, performance. So this, this is actually a router, but it has a firewall um, functionality built in and also rated, the performance is rated for the fi firewall functionality. So the first thing we did was the layer three test. Uh, we wanted to see the maximal loss-free layer three throughput. And we defined an iMix for that purpose. The iMix is based on sizes taken from RFC 5180. Unfortunately, we don't have the iMix itself because it is not specified. So we just made uh, based on the packet sizes. So the first was with the checkpoint. We took, uh, it has six ports. We took four of them for the traffic and uh, one port for management. Um, since our goal was three gigabits per second, two ports in every direction is enough. So we actually went ahead and verified their uh, statement that it does three gigabit per second with UDP uh, 1518. And in this setup, you can see all the traffic from port one would go to port three. There was no crossing between. And all the traffic from port two to port four and, uh, and back. So there was no uh, crossing between the ports. And in this setup, we were able to verify what, what the vendor said. It said three gigabits. We actually got this three gigabits. So this was a good sign. Then we changed it a bit. Um, it actually doesn't make sense to have just two pair of ports talking with each other. We wanted to do meshing. So we introduced the meshing in our tester and uh, the rate dropped. It's 10%, but it's um, still not as uh, dramatic as when we changed the UDP 1518 byte to the iMix we defined. We got a large uh, performance drop of 1.3 gigabits. So this was the uh, baseline for checkpoint. From now on, we took the 1.3 and treated it as the baseline for our tests. So the Juniper, um, the Juniper J series device it has four ports and a serial port. Um, we use one port to have web access, so we can manage the device and two ports for the traffic. The vendor said it can do 600 uh, megabits with very large packets or 400 uh, with iMix. So we assumed two, uh, ports, port, one port pair would be enough to achieve that. So let's see what happened. Uh, 600 megabits per second with the iMix. So the vendor said 400, but we actually measured more. So that was uh, a nice surprise to see. So now we go to the IPv4 and IPv6 tests. What we did was we taken uh, the recommendation from RFC 5180. We did uh, the test with various ratios of IPv6 and IPv4. So at the beginning we do 100% IPv4, then 90% IPv4, and then 10% IPv6, 50-50, and then go the other way around uh, the same, 90% IPv6 and so on. So what would be the, what would we expect from uh, these uh, mixes? So the first, the first thought that came to mind was as, as, m uh, as, as long as you get more <coughs> IPv6 traffic, the performance will sink and will sink in a very, very, uh, let's say dramatic fashion, I would say here it would be 50% or 30% of what we can do with IPv4. The other um, expectation would be that it would change. IPv6 would be less uh, in performance, but not so dramatically. The next one was that we would have um, like a point in between. So as long as we, as we approach 
percent, the rate would drop, and in the edges it would be uh, it would be more uh, we would get more performance. The the reason for this is maybe you have uh, I don't know process processor caches or uh, whatever do you need to do context switching between the processing IPv4 and IPv6 that could be uh, yeah impaired to to the performance of the device. So let's see what we got. For checkpoint, uh, we saw, as we said, 1.3 uh, gigabit per second with IPv4. When we started, only 10% of the traffic to send it at uh, IPv6. And uh, just, I would say at this point, we didn't just throw 1.3 gigabits at the device. We had uh, the tester was configured to do binary search to get the best the best ratio and lock in to the to the uh, highest throughput where we can get 90 and 10 percent of the same ratio and see where we get no loss uh, what the maximum we can get without loss so as we got only 10 percent of the traffic was ipv6 we already see a drop of nearly 50 percent uh, with 50-50, it goes down in a similar curve, and and so on. So in the in the end, we get 180 megabits per second from a device that's supposed to do three gigabits. <coughs> so in packets per second, if you're interested to see, in thousand packets per second, and let's see Juniper. Now Juniper was kind of different. Okay, question yes. Was it TCP flows or UDP? No, no, it was UDP. We did layer 3 connectionless uh, okay, traffic. Same question as before, is it between the same pair of ports and addresses all the time? No, <coughs> it changes. All the time, okay. Yeah. So uh, the Juniper had a different, diff we saw different behavior. The difference between 100% IPv6 and 100% IPv4 uh, excuse me, uh, was not very dramatic and still as you remember Juniper said 400 megabits it's still above um, but as we can see in the 50-50 case we see the, the lowest performance we get from the box uh, but it's still over what they uh, promised us, so we were happy. And a second again. The next uh, test, I'm not showing everything, I'm showing only the interesting results. We had the connection setup rate test with checkpoint. Set up as many connections as you can at once and see what's the highest rate the device can support. Good, the vendor said 25,000 but we measured a much, much lower rate on somewhere 3,000, I think, 3,200 or something like this. Um, and the reason for it, that as, as soon as I configured IPv6 address on one of the rules, then it uh, shut down an acceleration, fil uh, uh, acceleration feature called Secure Excel, and then the rate just went down. It didn't really work like advertised. No. So, what are you defining as connection? Um, I tried to set up a TCP uh, HTTP connection between two, the two testers, okay. and the firewall has to open a state for it, inspect it if it needs to, and pass it on to the to the next device. So this, this is just a through your handshake. Yeah, up? exactly. And you're doing a, a full close. Yeah. So w I'm setting up the connection. Uh, requesting a very, very, very small object, one byte, then closing the connection. Okay? So, ah, I got this here. So we measured um, 3,200 connections per second. As you can see, this was when the first rule contained both addresses. It was disabled from rule one. I removed it. I did it again. It said, Okay, I'm disabled from rule 4, because on rule 4 I had IPv6 again. And then we saw a much higher connection rate. So I hope this, in the, the new version, Gaia, which we didn't uh, 
We didn't test because it was after our testing uh, period. I hope this changed. But uh, from what I saw, I shouldn't be that optimistic. Uh, but we should test it to see. OK. So another thing about the connection setup rate, as you can see, uh, when we had 90% uh, IPv6, 10% IPv4, you see some, some um, oscillation there in the rate that the device can support. It, it tries to, to build up a lot of connection. In the end, it would stabilize at some point. For 100% IPv6, it had much, much more trouble. The oscillations were really big. So on the order of 2,000 from peak to peak. Uh, it looked like it's going to converge, but then I just ran out of time. Let's say 10 minutes of test. So that's uh, another curious result. Uh, um, about the stability of the rate the device can support. The next test, um, oh, I'm running out of time. The next test we did was uh, measure the layer three throughput when we have extension header, when the traffic has extension header. Now, the originally we were uh, we planned to do the layout like this: uh, Ethernet, IPv4, IPv6 routing header, some option in the header, and then UDP under it. Turned out that our tester had been this. Um, of course, we, we had bug report, the uh, vendor accepted, fixed it in the next version, but when we did the test, we had to improvise and change it with something that was equivalent, and we used the no next header, which is just payload. Um, so the only thing that we, we needed something that was connections. Now, but since we changed something, we need to do a baseline again. I'll show you uh, where it changed. So for checkpoint, nothing changed for the baseline. It was still 180 megabits per second. And for the extension headers, um, we had about a third of the of the uh, performance that it can do without extension header, about a third of it it lost. So when I got 180 megabits, uh, nearly 60 megabits were lost. So I also confirmed this by checking the maximum without loss, and it matches. So it's a bit less, but it matches in packets in uh, kilo packets per second. Also, okay, for the Juniper. Um, we saw a much higher rate. We had mm, 595 megabits per second in the baseline, and now we see much more. So I assume the UDP processing that we took out of the equation helped the Juniper achieve a higher uh, uh, performance with this setup. And the loss for Juniper was relatively minimal, so 11.4 megabits out of 630, and the maximum it can do is uh, 640. Um, and, and, yeah. I, maybe I missed it, but how big was the extension header? The extension header? It's a destination option header with this option, with the minimal padding. Can somebody count that for me? Uh, I think it should be eight or I, I can look it up and tell you okay uh, so where were we okay and packet per second <laughs> so the last test um, we did was the hop by hop option header mm -hmm. oh, I forgot to translate one um, so uh, RC5180 indicates that the hop-by-hop op op option um, may seriously impact the performance. We wanted to see how much. Um, we took the ratios to be tested uh, from the RFC. It's based on, on the ratios because the ratios are defined in terms of line rate. And uh, here it was obvious we can't go line rate with these uh, devices. So we took the ratios according to their baseline. So we have 100% without any hop-by-hop -hop header 
one percent in ninety in ninety nine, so one of the traffic will have hop by hop header, and then ten percent, fifty percent, and for completeness, one hundred percent. So let's see what happened. Um, for checkpoint, there was practically no change compared to the first test we did with the extension header. So about 60, uh, 60 megabits were, were lost, so that's uh, about a third. But there wasn't any, any change. We assume that checkpoint just ignores its header and doesn't pro process it at all. And in back per second, for Juniper, we saw something else. It was very dramatic. I got, um, the first time we tested this, I got losses in, in such a big order. I also did a baseline test with my tester alone, again, just to make sure everything works. Uh, this, uh, we also, I also lowered the rate because I couldn't see any, any ratios um, because of the uh, big losses we, we observed. So I turned it down to 400, which was what the vendor um, promised me. So it's good that I got more, but the vendor promised only 400. It must be for a reason. I turned it down to 400 and did uh, the test again. Now I got some picture. Um, I could see at least some detail. Uh, so we got, with only 1% of hop by hop traffic, we also see, we, we already see loss to the hop by hop traffic, not yet to, to the other traffic. When we increase it to 10%, uh, we see yeah, a, lot, a lot of the traffic get lost, but this starts also to impair normal traffic without hop by hop header. We uh, get to 50%. Um, we get very, very low throughput going through the box. So 150 out of the 400, which is 250 lost. Um, yeah, so 350 lost, excuse me. And in the end, uh, only hop by hop. So we have, uh, we only can push through f uh, eight, 800 kilo kilobit per second. And this, um, I believe Mark had this comment. This, this was the CPU bound, right? Performance bound of the CPU, probably. I don't know. I can only assume. Um, yeah, so I did this pretty quickly. And in kilo, kilo packets per second or in packets per second, loss. All right, questions? Have you, um, have you compared your tools and methodology to results from commercial testers? You know, this, is a, uh, this is a commercial tester. Which one did you use, I'm sorry? The Ixia. The Ixia yeah. breaking point? No, with oh. the uh, IX network. IX. Okay. And IX load for the, sure. yeah. Did you compare the results with the documentation or information from the suppliers themselves? Yeah, so as i shown here, Oh, by the way, they say nothing about IPv6, so you wouldn't find a number that says, with IPv6, we support this and this. Okay. I just took what they claim as performance numbers in general. So yeah. the, uh, they don't give me, if you do IPv6, you, we give you this much. Don't specify it at all. Yeah, well, uh, we did this, as, as I said, we did this as a part of a uh, research project. Yeah. Uh, I didn't put this into context, so it's maybe hard to, uh, to correlate. We usually have some contact with the vendor, mm -hmm. either directly or they are doing the configuration, and we're verifying. Okay, the maybe Herbert. The usually, the Google performance system, of course, are in connection with the vendors. Yeah. But in this case, because it was a research project, Yeah, as an SMU, as Cisco for, or Juniper or whatever, for, for a specific numbers uh, would be very difficult I think, mm. to get numbers. So we thought, okay, it's more realistic to play around with this scenario as it is and say, okay, if you are a small and medium 
when now a, a company uh, you have to face it yeah. as it is here uh, as the result show. So that was one of the main reasons for this. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, so okay, that was that was my presentation. Thanks. Thank you.